Welcome back to the Fenrir Rescue Diaries, guys. And today we are back joined with our wonderful staffy friends. If you didn't see the last episode, this is a, another staffy that had been found abandoned, left on the streets. Uh, the police were called. She's ended up in the shelter with nowhere to go and no home for her. So I've come in, I volunteer my time at the shelter um, and we've started doing a temperament assessment. We're going to do some training sessions and try and get her to a place. Yes, try and get a place to where um, she'll make a wonderful family companion. So in the last session, we did a lot of work on resource guarding. Um, and we kind of highlighted that it would be excellent to teach her a drop it command, which is something that we'll work on in a future session. But other than that, there's no real concerns around resource guarding, that she's a wonderful, happy-go-lucky, lovely energy dog. She's a bit dirty, probably just needs a bit of TLC and a bit of love. Um, but other than that, she's a classic, wonderful Staffy. One of the reasons I love Staffy so much. The only other issue, issue is it's very, very common with a vast amount of dogs is around uh, a lack of engagement and i just want to start to build up some engagement so in this session you're going to see me do one of my engagement drills um she is very food and toy driven probably more toy driven but what i want to do is do more stuff around food um just so i can get more reps in get the reps in quicker and she becomes a bit obsessed with toys and i don't want to get her to that level of excitement again you might hear there that there's a little bit of crying going that's a telltale sign of a little bit of anxiety and frustration building. That anxiety and frustration is building because she's not looking to me for leadership, guidance and direction. She doesn't know how to behave, what to do. She's in this weird situation where there's lots of people around, there's lots of other dogs around, there's lots of other dogs barking. And to help with that anxiety and bring that tension down, I need to get that engagement back to me where I can then layer on some obedience work and let her know that, okay, cool, I've got this, I'm in charge. And when a dog makes that kind of connection in their brain, that's where you can literally see in front of your eyes a dog go, oh, and the weight of the world comes off their shoulders. So we're going to dive into it. I believe the best way to do that is around a lead, a lead pressure based engagement drill. Um, you're going to need a, a balanced tool for that. Yes, you know where my treats are. You're a clever girl. Staffies are so fun to train because they are so well switched on. Um, depending on the extremity of any kind of reactive type behaviours, how badly the dog pulls, how strong they are, will depend on what tool we're using. You all know that my slip lead is my trusty tool. Uh, we don't need to go any more than this. You could go kind of prong collar, e-collars, choke chains. Um, I would be very, very surprised with um, this case if we're going to have to utilise one of those tools. I think a slip lead will be more than enough. And the basic principle is around we're going in these different directions and i need you to be glued to me work with me if you're not and i make that uh, turn and you're not focusing on me i'm going to very quickly just say hey we're going hey we're going and what that'll do is it tunes up that engagement and it gets us starting to know oh i better pay attention i better focus i better make sure i know where it is that we're going when she then starts to display those behaviours, I then pay them and I reward them. And you'll find that that engagement is then brilliant. So let's dive straight into it. So first of all, I want to let her know, look, brilliant, very clever, that I have got some food on me, but I don't want to lure this behaviour. I want it to be based through, um, through that engagement and through that leadership. So again, we can be very careful to not lure it because that's a trick that a lot of trainers use is that they'll lure the behavior to make them look good and I don't want that to be the case here. So we're gonna use my command of let's go. And when she doesn't, she's just gonna get a little pop on the lead. Let's go. Let's go. So already dropping in a bit nicer. Let's go. Yes, good. Good, so let's go. Yes, good girl. Yes, good. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, good. This time she's getting paid for it. Brilliant, yes. Good, so this is a highlight. Why is a dog that's just been physically corrected more excited and more happy than you've seen her during these whole sessions? If an aversive-based, balance-based approach squashes a dog and makes them fearful. This isn't a fearful dog. We're building a dog that's starting to get engaged. Let's go good let's go yes good let's go yes let's go let's go yes good brilliant yes oh you're such a good girl yes so that was the best one yet now look at this tails wagging 
that anxiety is starting to turn into kind of engagement and trust and relationship. Wonderful. So again, the second you start making these own decisions where you're not in tune with me, I'm letting you know, hey, pop back, come back to me, please. Yes, good girl, good girl. So that one was superb, you saw, because I made that decision and we're now starting to get it naturally where she made the decision herself and she stayed with me and remained in tune with me and was engaging with me that she therefore didn't need any lead pressure and when she came to me i can then pay that and that's uh, the essence of a balanced approach if you're not paying attention if you're making your own decisions if you're doing the wrong things it's going to let you know when you do the right things and pay attention to me engage with me then i'm going to pay you and the more you do that so when when you see me do these sessions the dog is displaying the wrong behavior 99% of the time and the right behavior 1% of the time. So yes, I have to correct that much more frequently. But as you can see in the space of minutes, them displaying the wrong behavior starts to come down really quickly and them displaying the right behavior starts to come up. So me having to correct the bad behavior happens less frequently and me praising and reinforcing the desirable behavior happens more frequently. And by the end of this session, I'll be barely correcting her whatsoever and praising her and reinforcing her. And that's the essence of balance. But if you don't have the yin to the yang, the one to the zero, the other side of the picture, you have no balance. And without balance, a dog becomes anxious, fearful, um, and that's when all the negative behaviors start to come in. So we've just finished our tune up and it's an engagement tune-up. You'll notice that I didn't use any kind of cueing or luring type behaviours. It was a very silent tune-up using lead pressure, good assertive energy. <laughs> Are we tiring you out there, girl? Are you getting tired? But this is what I'm talking about. When you come in and inject that leadership that a dog can start to know that you're in control of this situation, you notice there, yes, I used lead pressure and I used a corrective approach with my slip lead. Now, a positive only person would say that that's squashing her, that's making her fearful of me, that's making her only do things for me because she's scared of me. That's not the case at all. She's doing those things because she's now starting to respect my leadership and she's looking up to me for guidance and direction, which all dogs absolutely crave. And I'm giving her that leadership, guidance and direction because I love her, because I love dogs, because I know that giving a dog that makes them happy. It makes them relax like this. It allows her to settle down and have a lie down on the grass, even though she's got dogs barking at her on the other side of the cage. Because now, because I've come in and stepped in and gone, I've got, I've got this. I'm in control of this situation. This is the attitude that we have now. A relaxed, calm dog, as opposed to an anxious dog that was crying and pulling all over the place. And now we're getting this, where she's starting to look up to me for guidance and direction. And that is absolutely wonderful. So that's why I do that first. Now we can build on this with all the fun things that we want to do. So now we can start to test her obedience. Now we can start paying her much more with treats. Now the communication can come in. I always talk about the importance of leadership first that's the foundation because a good leadership foundation gives you a rock solid relationship with a dog that rock solid relationship then opens the communication pathways wide open what i've just come in and done is i've come in very quickly and asserted calm consistent loving leadership to this dog with a balanced approach with no food no praise no reward i've just come in and asserted myself as a calm loving consistent leader what that has now done is I managed to build a lovely relationship between the two of us where she's starting to calm down and go, oh, okay, cool, I don't need to worry because you're in charge, you've got this. Now we can communicate effortlessly now and now we can have fun. So this is finally where we're going to start to bring the treats out and we're going to see what she knows. So we're going to see if we've got to sit. Oh, good girl, yes, good. Now we're dog training, guys. So what you just saw from me was a leadership-based behaviour intervention programme utilizing a balanced methodology. Now I've done that, now I'm becoming a dog trainer. Now I'm gonna start using much more positive reinforcement. I'm gonna lure behaviors, cue up behaviors, mark yes, and reinforce those behaviors. We're gonna see if we've got a down. Down, so we haven't got a down. Sit, yes. So we know we've got a sit, 
And if we haven't got a down, we probably haven't got much more because that tends to be when you're working with shelter dogs, if they've got any obedience, it usually goes in the form of sit, paw, down, and then advanced stuff comes after that. So let's see if we've got a paw. No? Oh yes, paw. <laughs> yes, good. Thank you. Brilliant. Now we can have fun. Now we can communicate with each other, which is what dog training is. When you're training a dog, you're communicating to them what you want. You also can communicate to a dog what you don't want, but you can't communicate at all without a good relationship and without leadership. So straight away, that is what we've come in and achieved in this session. So first and foremost, that you saw on the last video, we tested the temperament of the dog. Is there any resource guarding to be concerned about? That's the thing that I always look for first and foremost. Then I've come in and I've provided leadership and built relationship. I did that in the form of my behavior intervention program of utilizing a lead-based tune-up, utilizing a little bit of lead pressure, positive body language, assertive body language, and non-verbal communication. Now I've done that, now we can have tons of fun. We've highlighted that we've got a sit, we've got a paw, we can teach her whatever we want now because she's looking at me for guidance and direction. Yes, she wants to please me. She wants to work with me. I can now tell her what I do want from her and I can also tell her what I don't want from her. And the world is our oyster, but you can't achieve that without good communication. You can't have good communication without a good relationship with your dog and you won't get a good relationship unless you are a calm, consistent leader. So if you love these dogs as much as I do, lead those dogs and lead them because you love them because ultimately leadership is love.